Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to explain estrogen dominance in females, how it affects the menstrual cycle, the balance between estrogen and progesterone, and what to do about it. Now, I'm going to have, let's first start off with the menstrual cycle. This is very important to know. The average menstrual cycle is 28 days. Days 0 through 5, that's when they're having their period. That's when the uterine lining fluffs off through the vaginal area, and that goes days through 5. Now, there's a balance between estrogen and progesterone. Basically, estrogen's function is to prepare her body for pregnancy, and the main function of progesterone is actually to maintain it. Now, there's different balance of hormonal levels. Now, I'm going to talk about the ratio. That's very important, the ratio between progesterone and estrogen. Now, days 5 through 14, so let's say 14 here, this is her ovulation phase, okay, that's when she ovulates. So between days, is, days 5 through 14, there's an increase of estrogen and progesterone levels are on a chart lower. However, in the days 5 through 14, females are making on the average 25 times more progesterone than estrogen. So on the average, you're making 23 times more progesterone than estrogen, and it peaks out between the days of 12 to 13. So females peak out their progesterone to estrogen levels pre-ovulation on days 12 to 13. Then what happens after they ovulate, it takes a dramatic shift. The progesterone levels increase dramatically throughout the post-ovulatory phase. And between the ages, eight days of 18 to 22, let's say day 20, this is when the progesterone levels are at their highest meaning that they produce anywhere from 200 to 300 times more progesterone than estrogen. Okay, so you can see the big difference here. Even though in the, in the pre-ovulatory phase, they're making, it looks like they're making more estrogen than progesterone, but still they're making, uh, it's the ratio. They're making 25 times more progesterone than estrogen pre-ovulation, and then after ovulation by day 20, they're making anywhere from 20, I'm sorry, 200 to 300 times more progesterone. So again, it's the ratio. So how does the menstrual cycle work? The menstrual cycle works, it starts off <clears throat> in menstruation. So there's, there's, there's this dramatic decrease in hormones which triggers menstruation. Okay, so days through zero through five, that's when they have their period because of the drop in hormones. Now again, I'm talking about if they don't get pregnant. If they, don't get, if they do get pregnant, that's something totally different. So then what happens is that in the brain, in the anterior, anterior pituitary gland sends a signal down to the ovaries to release follicle stimulating hormone. So in the first half, the follicle is produced, the egg in the ovary, okay? So let's just say this is, again, follicle stimulating hormones being released, follicle stimulating hormones being released, okay? To secrete, to, for, the, for the development of the egg in the ovary. And that increases estrogen in the first half of the phase. Then what happens, as the estrogen levels begin to uh, rise even more, it releases what's called luteinizing hormone. Okay, so luteinizing, luteinizing hormone, okay, st starts to increase in the anterior pituitary gland, which will signal, again, ovulation to occur, and you'll have an increase in progesterone in the second half of the cycle. Now again, if the, if the female does not get pregnant, you're going to have this dramatic drop in hormones, which signifies her period. Okay, and, and it just starts all over again. Now remember, there is a ratio. So in this little makeshift chart here, this, this is the easiest way I describe it, is let's say progesterone is a 25 pound weight and estrogen is a one pound weight. Now if there's an increase in estrogen due to hormones, due to diet, due to stress levels, so forth and so on, the estrogen is actually gonna increase because the progesterone is going to decrease. So even though the scale is tipped in progesterone's favor, again, this is the ratio. So let's just say now that progesterone is a 20, 20 pound weight, that means that estrogen is a five pound weight. And this is going to tip the scale. And this is called estrogen dominance in females. And estrogen dominance in, dominance in females, it, what does, it triggers a lot of symptoms. Bloating, cramping, Fibroids. fibroids. Fibroids are produced because too much estrogen. So estrogen, the function of estrogen, estrogen, 
is to replicate cells. So cell replicates. The function of progesterone is actually to make the cells grow taller and they mature. So when you have too much estrogen and not enough progesterone, this is where you get fibroids, increased tissue growth, moodiness, weight gain, PCOS. PCOS is an estrogen dominant situation. Fatigue, decre decreased thyroid. When there's too much estrogen floating around in a female's anatomy, and also a male, but let's just talk about the female, it shuts down her thyroid. So this is where a lot of females who are of estrogen dominance, if they go to the doctor and they, get, and they, they complain of hypothyroid. Gallstones. Gallstones, too much estrogen in a body makes the, makes the bile um, sloppy. It makes it sticky. Okay, so when you don't have enough, when you have, again, when you have too much estrogen in the body, it makes, what happens, it creates gallstones. Okay, so again, estrogen dominance is not a good thing in the, in the female anatomy. Okay, so let's just review this mechanism real quick. Okay, so how the menstrual cycle happens. So you have, it starts off with a decrease in hormones. Now again, providing the female does not get pregnant. Okay, so by day 26, 27, 28, there's a drop in hormones, which causes the menstrual cycle to occur. And then it starts over from the beginning. So it's pretty awesome because it's, it's a brain thing. So the hypothalamus, which is your master gland, sends a signal down to the anterior pituitary gland, which sends a signal down to the ovaries, to stimulate follicle stimulating hormone. The follicle in the ovary will grow. So the follicle in the ovary causes an increase of estrogen, hence the growth. Because remember, estrogen causes cells to grow, progesterone causes cells to mature. Okay, so increased follicle stimulating hormone, the follicle is developing, which will stimulate the release of estrogen. Now, increase of estrogens will increase, again, will send a signal to the brain, <clears throat> to again, to the anterior pituitary gland to send a signal down to the ovary to, relate, to stimulate luteinizing hormone. Okay, now, with the increase in luteinizing hormone, this is where you get the progesterone increase after ovulation. Now, remember, the, after ovulation, by the peak days 18 to 22, let's just say days, day 20 to make it, to make it simple, the average female is making anywhere from 200 to 300 times more progesterone in her body. Because remember, it's progesterone that wants to maintain the uterine lining if, if she gets pregnant. Okay, so just a review of the mechanism. So it could be a brain thing, okay? Also, the, body, the female body makes different types of estrogens, okay? Because estrogen is just an umbrella, umbrella term. Now, the estrogens are produced in the ovaries and also to, are produced in the adrenal glands as well. So three types, one estradiol. Now estradiol, this is during the period of possible pregnancy, this is a primary uh, estrogen that's produced by, produced and secreted by the ovary. So this is the most common. Then you have estrone, which is a metabolite of estradiol. This is what the females basically live on after menopause, okay? So it's, an, it's primary hormones circling after menopause because it's, the, it's from the conversion of ester, estradiol in the peripheral tissues. Also, estriol, this is a metabolite of, again, estradiol. This is, preg this is present when the females are pregnant, during the pregnancy, produced, because it's produced by the placenta. So, there's three main types of estrogens that are utilized by the female. One, again, during the primary years, after menopause and pregnancy. So they're produced by, from DHA. So DHA converts estradiol, again, they call it E2 because the, right here, di, E2, and that can convert to esterone, esterone one. So we say that's E1. Now this is pretty, this is pretty cool because what esterone could do, it could convert to the 2-hydroxy, which is the protective, this is the good estrogen, or broken down in the liver, it could produce 16 hydroxy, which again, this is the bad, that's the bad estrogen. So when females are taking in too much estrogen, what it does, it actually shuts down the production of the good estrogen and actually increases the production of the bad estrogen. So this is when females get estrogen dominance, this is where a lot of the symptomatology may occur. This is why cleaning out the liver is so important to female health.
Okay, so now what's the role of estrogen and progesterone in a female's body, but also too, what's most important is that this is where it's explained that there has to be a proper balance from progesterone to estrogen. Because if a female gets too much on one side, especially estrogen dominance, this is where all the symptoms can occur. So very important. What's the role of estrogen? The role of estrogen is to build the uterine lining. So the pre-ovulation, the function of estrogen, remember, is to build, is to build that uterine wall. Also too, estrogen increases body fat. It protects the skin. It influ it, what it does influences the thyroid function, actually impairs it because too much floating estrogen actually competes with the thyroid, the receptors on the thyroid gland, which actually shuts it down. So this is where, you know, birth control pills, uh, increase too much estrogen in the diet, actually impairs the thyroid, thyroid function. Increases blood clotting. Slows bone loss. This is where females postmenopausal, the main, the main situation that we want to try to avoid is the decrease in bone density. Okay, so this is where osteoporosis, osteopenia. It's not a calcium thing, it's a hormonal thing. Because too much estrogen floating around the system, cancer loves estrogen. So is the rule of thumb. Because remember, the role of estrogen is to replicate, is again, is to replicate cells. So too much estrogen, estrogen dominance, you're increasing the risk of endometrial cancer. Perfect place for a cancer to occur in the, in, in the endometrial lining. Also, it increases the risk of breast cancer. Basically, any cancers, uh, ovarian cancer, breast cancer, uterine cancer, endometrial cancer. Again, too much estrogen causes cells to divide rapidly. Decreased libido. Yes, believe it or not, females have, who are estrogen dominant actually have a decreased libido. It, increased, it impairs the blood sugar levels. Now, the role of progesterone, okay, this is the second half of the cycle. This is when, again, post-ovulation occurs. So remember, estrogen prepares the uterus for, for baby, and progesterone is there to maintain it. So it releases PMS. Okay, now we're talking about the flip, the balance. Release PMS. It protects the breast. Okay, uh, mesodynia. Okay. It's the anti-stress hormone. Too much estrogen in a female, and a female causes stress. Okay, so again, progesterone relieves the stress. It's the anti-stress. Builds bones. Depletes, the problem is with progesterone, it depletes under stress because with cortisol, you need progesterone to produce cortisol, which is your stress hormone. Remember, okay, so estrogen is produced in one area, progesterone is produced in total different areas. So again, with progesterone, with progesterone, it produces cortisol. This is why females under stress, they have a hard time de-stressing because they deplete their progesterone levels, okay? Sleep, wonderful for sleep. Again, this maintains the uterine lining. It helps use fat for energy. It's anti-cancer. Remember, estrogen causes cancer, so progesterone, building up the progesterone levels is the anti-cancer. It increases the libido. So how the female hormonal cycle works is that after ovulation, occurs, there is an increase of progesterone, and this is where a female's libido skyrockets. Because remember, day, day 20, the progesterone peaks at about 200, 300, time, 300 times. It increases the thyroid function. If estrogen decreases it, progesterone will increase it. It also too, it regulates blood sugar. So again, these are, this is the function between estrogen and progesterone. This is why when a female is in estrogen dominance, it causes a lot of situations to her anatomy. So the goal as always is to decrease the estrogen while at the same time increasing the progesterone. Okay, so how do we take care of that excessive amount of estrogen to balance out the estrogen progesterone levels? A couple different ways. One, I always recommend increase the cruciferous vegetables. Cruciferous, cruciferous vegetables are phenomenal to help balance out the excess amount of estrogen in females and in males, okay? like broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, kale. Also too, avoid the estrogen laced and based foods. GMO, soy, dairy, sugar. Eliminate that from the diet that's going to bring down those estrogen levels, okay? And again, I always recommend grass-fed. Grass-fed beef, grass-fed chicken. Again, if you're a milk drinker, make sure you go from the natural farms, okay? so. You want to avoid the estrogen-based foods. Then you want to support, okay, DIM. 
Dan's a supplement that's phenomenal to help balance out that excess amount of bad estrogen. Folic acid, iron, calcium, B12, omega-3. Omega-3 is a phenomenal anti-inflammatory overall. Vitamin D, I want to bring up those vitamin D levels because then that's going to help stabilize the hormones. Magnesium. Also too, powerful supplement. You want to support the liver because remember, it's the liver that helps create the hormones and it's going to get rid itself of the access, the bad estrogens that's building up in the system. I always recommend a couple different things. You can do a good liver support. I always recommend glutathione. Glutathione is a phenomenal amino acid which helps detox the liver, which helps clear out those liver pathways to help stabilize the estrogen levels and bring those progesterone levels back up again. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please share with a friend and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much. Hello, this is Dr. Juad. Please subscribe to my channel for more up-to-date videos. And thanks for watching.